have the great privilege today of ha having Father Tom Hagen and Doug Campbell here to tell us about our parish and our parish activities in Haiti, since we belong and they are an extension of who we are. And uh, we're so familiar with Haiti that there are our brothers and our sisters and we have a special bond of belonging. It's more than spiritual, it's also a material belonging. And we'd like to get some updating and insight into the wonders and the miracles that the Lord is working in Haiti. And some much of it is through our, our gifting and our belonging. So welcome uh, to Father Tom Hagen and to Doug Campbell. Let's give them a big word of welcome. It is almost dizzying in scope what Hands Together is doing through Father Tom, Doug Campbell, and especially the Haitian staff of 700. Hands Together seeks to uplift the Haitian people with a fourfold thrust, schools, food, medicine, and jobs. The schools are thriving 8,000 students in Cité Soleil from preschool through high school. Another 3,000 students in eight remote impoverished villages. Hands Together Schools are the only free schools in all of Haiti. A critical key to health is sufficient food. The Hands Together feeding programs are in full swing. 11,000 free meals daily. A monumental task with parents and staff pitching in. The mobile medical clinic now moves throughout the slum of Cité Soleil and even to remote villages where hundreds wait hour on end to see a doctor. A sound body for a sound mind. Farming should be the number one employer in Haiti. Clark Farm provides a model farm for all of the country. Student farmers are bused in to learn the latest in agricultural science. Experimentation is constant. A bean field soon to become a banana grove. The new headquarters. The greenhouse peppers yielded tenfold over the peppers grown outside. Remarkable. The co-op of 400 farmer families is thriving and the credit union is microfinancing 213 families. Haitian women leading. The Hands Together Mandala Project continues to show a family how to be self-sufficient on less than a quarter acre of land. This dizzying scope is Hands Together. But Hands Together is not standing still. Wonderful new developments are underway. Now, every school has a program for the children who, for whatever unthinkable reason, are not in a school. A meal, rudimentary reading, writing, arithmetic. Already 1,600 are being rescued. This year, 40 graduates from Hands Together High Schools are receiving a full scholarship to a Haitian college at an annual expense of $5,000 per student. It is a dramatic commitment to the future of these students and their country. From a pile of rocks just a few months ago, this is the nutrition center soon to be opened in the T. Colive slum of Gonaive. 
hundreds, if not thousands, of children will be receiving at least one good meal a day. Father Gerard's vision. Sometimes the small things in life have the greatest impact. Moving from a carjack to a hand press in order to make briquettes is a giant step. The briquettes replace charcoal for fuel, saving the trees, conserving butane, providing cheaper fuel, and creating more jobs. Remember the water truck? Some years ago, Hands Together purchased a second-hand water truck. The truck was a godsend during the aftermath of the earthquake. Today, the truck follows the medical clinic, life-giving water close at hand. Do you think this was a good idea? Every day, Hands Together is meeting new and pressing needs. The dizzying scope is expanding. This is only possible because of friends. If you would like to join hands with Hands Together in helping the poor of Haiti, contact Hands Together, area code 413-731-7716, website www.handstogether.org. That's Hi, good morning, everybody. Well, it's good to be back home in Holy Family. It is our family in a lot of ways. Tom and I really feel that. Did you, um, did they pass out the Dramamine pills when you were getting the bulletins? Did you get all those? You okay? I know. Dizzying scope. Let's be honest though. All throughout that video, Hands Together is doing this and Hands Together bought a water truck. And it's not really what it is, is it? It's you and us joining together in some sort of mystical way to deal with the overwhelming. The year that we've just experienced has been truly overwhelming. I mean, it seems like every year, as Tom says, just gets harder and harder, but the, the hundreds of gang members at the gate demanding more work, and us not be able to hire them all, the, the expansion of food programs and only getting a certain amount of food, or where's the rest gonna come from? The, um, the demands for supplies and computers, and, and Tom on the phone, Doug, we, we can't, you know, our machine can't handle this. It's too much. And all of these things together, the suffering, the, the mobile clinic not being able to go out as much as see, all these things together, I think, when we sit down and we feel so overwhelmed by it all, is the cry of the poor. It's the cry of the poor. And what it really is, is the cry of our Lord Jesus. And he is crying out to us. He's crying out to me, and he's crying out to Clem, and he's crying out to Tom, and he's saying, I need you. I need you. I don't need you when you graduate or when you retire. I need you now. I need you to go out into the vineyard, and it's hard out there, and it's sometimes you're not going to want to go out there. And Sometimes I haven't gone out there. I've chosen not to when I shut my ears to the cry of the poor. And so when we sit there and we're overwhelmed, the time, I don't know how all that happened. We didn't sit down and draw out a master plan to do that. The only thing we did was say, Lord, what do we do? Bring, bring your needs to your family and sit down at the table with your family and share them with them. And we sat down with our holy family in Pasadena. And we have dreams. We had dreams of a clinic, a mobile clinic. We had dreams of a farm and, and some briquettes and and we needed things, and, and you found them. We have 140 parishes that we have to speak at this summer. I, I, if I did one every weekend, and Tom, we'd never be able to come close. I said, Carl, we, we don't know what we're going to do. So Monsignor Connolly's getting on a plane the next weekend, and he's going to Ohio. Father Tony is on a plane, he went out yesterday, and he's doing a parish for us right now because we're family, and we help one another. The music you hear on the back of that video was part of our family. He's sitting here somewhere. Chris Leonard's created this beautiful symphony. That's from, that's from our family. The dream of our, of our music school in Port-au-Prince, you'll never be able to do that. They'll never get the instruments. 
We have so many instruments because of you. The school is adding a second floor. It's going to open in December. And with Chris's help, I bet that next year that video can have music from our students is in the background because we came to our family and we asked them for help. I don't know how or what we do without you. So thank you. And we're just going to stick with it. And when our Lord calls us into the vineyard, we're not going to be afraid and we're going to do the best we can and just march out in there and do our work. I'm going to call my boss up now to say a few words. I, I, I love you. I pray for you. And we ask for your support again this year. Thank you. God bless you. As I get older, I find myself often looking at the tabernacle, find, my, find myself often saying, I can't do that. No. And then somehow I start doing it. This beautiful gospel today, we need not have to interpret it. It interprets us. It touches us. Because each and every one of us in this church has that same struggle. We want to... We want to say yes, but everything in us wants to say no. I thank Doug for his witness, and I now witness to you as well. Cardinal Sunins years ago said, the definition of a witness is that one's actions would not make sense if it were not for Jesus. It makes no sense at all that a young college student leaves Procter and & Gamble and goes down to Haiti and dedicates his life. His name's Doug Campbell. It makes no sense of a wonderful pastor, Clem Connolly, years ago travels to the, to the most dangerous and poorest slum in the world and says, our parish wants to be here. It makes no sense to, to do the things that we are doing. And each of us, we struggle with that. But the reason why we do it is because of the Eucharist, because of Jesus. He wants us to do it, and it's hard. Our head and our heart are saying no. It's hard to keep a marriage going. It's hard to raise children in our culture. It's hard to run a large parish like this. It's hard to work where I am in the city, City Soleil. I wish I could tell you right now, hey, this year was a great year. But honestly, it's, it was the, it's been the toughest year of my life. I lost a young man I considered my son back on June the 25th, who was shot three times in my house. That young doctor you saw in the video was shot repeatedly outside the clinic. Five of our staff have been killed, and others are in hiding now. But this is the life in City Soleil as it is right now. It makes no sense unless Jesus was present. So I look out at you now, and I, I, don't wanna, I wanna give witness. First of all, I wanna witness to the wonderful parish that is Holy Family. When I came here yesterday, I felt at home again, and early this morning, in the comforting words of Clem, and thank you, Clem, and thank you for coming eight or nine years ago with Carl and, and saying we want to do something. All that, that, that video can't even, even express or, or, or let you know how much this wonderful parish has done for the people of Haiti and for the people of that terrible slum. I go back to Mar, this old body of mine doesn't want to go back. My head tells me not, my heart. But you know what it is? As I get older, I find out our faith is not in our head, it's not in our heart, it's in our feet. It's where we stand. And as long as we're standing there, we may not want to be there. And everything says it doesn't make sense, but we're there. And each and every one of you can give witness to that. We're there. And one day, one moment, we don't know when it is, we look up and we realize we're at the foot of the cross. And so, 
why is it when I look out of you now, I don't feel alone? I feel energized. And I think it's because of this great parish. I, I think our Holy Father Francis, he would be really proud of your parish. I think it's the best in the world, thanks to your wonderful leadership. And so as I look out at you now, I thank you on the bottom of my heart, and all the people of Haiti thank you, because we could not have done it without you. And we'll continue. And you know what? The whole world will shake their heads and say, it doesn't make sense until they realize we're doing it for Jesus. Your Eucharist here at Holy Family is authentic because you make it real. Thank you, thank you. God bless you, and God love you. It's a privilege to have Father Tom and Doug here to tell us about our parish and our parish activities in Haiti. In the year 2000, you, the people of Holy Family, had completed what we called the Vision Project, which was to acquire property in the area and to build a school, pastoral center, and to build everything except, except the church. The whole parish was reconfigured, and you made that happen. It was a miracle that you made it happen. And then here in the year 2000, I began to look at this community and say, but this community always thinks out of the box. That's how we had a vision project, because we always think greater things. And I began to think, if we keep looking in to get what we need for ourselves, we'll die. Our spirits will die. So we must look out. And Karl Hoschneider, who is uh, the inspiration and the architect of so much here at Holy Family, uh, Karl said, well, why don't we look at Haiti? Because it's the poorest country in the hemisphere, and it's not that far away from it. It's on our doorstep of the United States. So Karl and I went to Haiti in the year 2000, and that was the beginning of our involvement down in Haiti. And by the way, shortly thereafter, I said it, it shouldn't be a clerical thing, so I handed it off to lay leadership who have been incredibly effective in leading our Haiti mission. And the miracles that happened at Holy Family happened not because of the priest, it happened because of the people. And it continues to happen because Cambria, who is our leader, the lay person leading the parish, the woman leading the parish, makes it happen. She is the one who inspires it now. So I want to say this to you, that there is some place deep inside of us. It's the noble part of us. It's the best that's in us. And that part of us wants to give to Haiti. I want to appeal to the best, the deepest, the richest, the most blessed, the holiest part of who we are to say, we really do want to give. And here is the opportunity to give. So two things I want you to do. One, I want you to take this brochure. Take it home. Take more than one. Go to the Continental Breakfast. Take a number of them. Hand them out. Give them to your friends. Pass them around to your family. Give them to your parents. Give them to your... Hand them around. Because your families and your friends, they are also part of Mission Haiti because you are part of Mission Haiti. And secondly, I want you to think about giving a gift. Now, when you think about giving a gift, you probably have an idea of what you're giving. I want you to give more than you have in your mind. That's the way we do it. That's the way Holy Family did it. That's how we got a vision project. That's why we are in Haiti, because not only is it good for Haiti, it's good for us. We have the privilege of giving from the heart. We're not giving from the mind now, we're giving from the heart. So think about that, and thank you for all the years in which you truly, truly have inspired me in the manner of uh, being a living church. Thank you very much, and I know that you will continue to support Haiti. Thank you. <coughs> thank you.